Over the course of the last four weeks, our class has had the privilege of discussing different issues dealing with environmental sociology and the impacts that many of these issues impose on society. The four main ideas we studied over the four weeks of this course include an introduction to the basics of environmental sociology, energy and climate change, food production and consumption, and sustainability. Though all these topics are of great importance, we picked two of these four main ideas to discuss with you today, energy and climate change and food production and consumption. Climate change is happening right now because of a nominally known as the greenhouse gas effect. This issue arises when greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane, increase, trapping heat inside our atmosphere and raising Earth's temperature. This greenhouse gas effect creates multiple drastic environmental and economic consequences. Here are some quick facts about climate change. Globally, temperatures have risen by 1.62 degrees since the late 19th century. 2016 was the warmest year in the past 2,000 years. The carbon dioxide in our atmosphere has doubled in the past 150 years, and sea levels in the U.S. alone have risen between 7 to 12.5 inches in the past 50 years. The climate crisis leads to increasingly extreme ramifications, from people being displaced from their homes because of potential threats of flooding, rising temperatures depleting our polar ice, increase, increased severity and occurrence of natural disasters, to increased droughts and famines. If we don't take action now, we will end up underwater, homeless, starving, and in an even bigger crisis than we are now. The American food industry is run and controlled by large corporations motivated by self-interest and capital that change how they produce food in order to leave consumers dependent on their practices. These corporations use unnatural ingredients such as GMOs, dyes, chemicals, pesticides, and suspicious labeling ethics in order to gain more money and entice consumers. GMOs are organisms that have been artificially manipulated in order to get a larger yield, reduce harvest failure, and increase the size of an, of an organism. While this sounds like an efficient process, not many studies have been done to confirm the lack of health risks associated with GMOs. Dyes and chemicals are added to food to increase shelf life, to make produce more cosmetically appealing, to addict customers, and to grow more food efficiently. However, not only are these practices toxic to the human body, but most of these factors are not properly regulated while labeling products, making it hard for consumers to know exactly what is in their food and what they are putting into their bodies. How far do you think your food travels to get to your plate? Your typical banana travels 1,020 miles just to make it into the U.S. before it begins its journey to your local grocery store. This is the reality for many of our foods, outsourced to other countries so we don't have to wait for the proper growing season to have access to them. The fuel used to get these goods to where they are going is what we call food miles. Food deserts are urban areas in which it is difficult to buy affordable or good quality fresh food. The largest food desert in the U.S. is actually New York City. This affects upwards of 3 million New York citizens and is caused by the small profit margins of grocery stores competing with fast food chains, space restrictions, and rising rent prices preventing the operation of full-service supermarkets. Imagine you were born to a mother you never get to see, forced to grow up in a pen never getting to see the light of day, and un unable to move in your surroundings. For some creatures, this is their reality. Producers such as Smithfield Farms keep their livestock in gestation crates, which, in a survey, 83% of people thought was inhumane. These animals spend their lives in these confined areas, not getting the veterinary assistance that they need for open wounds. The only medical attention that they receive comes in the form of sprays of antibiotics. These antibiotics, as well as their waste and blood, drain into a catch that carries it to a man-made lake. When it rains, these lakes overflow and spill out into the surrounding areas, creating a big risk of medical, environmental, and economical issues. When these lakes get filled and the farm decides it needs to be drained, they do just that, spraying the waste into surrounding fields. These practices have been known to cause people in the surrounding areas to get migraines, develop asthma, and become nauseous.